Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday children's message. It's Sunday, December 27th. Um, I want to thank those of you that continue to watch these videos, those of you that watch them live, those of you that watch them later on. Uh, uh, listen to this. Last week, there were 90 people, 90 people that view, that watched the, uh, the, the, the children's message. Uh, that means that many of you are, sh are sharing them. Uh, it wasn't that there was actually only four of you that shared, and even with the four, there ended up being that many. So if more shared, we would get it out more and more. <coughs> I trust that many of you young people had a, I hope, had a great Christmas. I know it's not the same. I'm sure some of you weren't able to get all your family together. I know we weren't able to. Uh, my granddaughter, Yasmin, was not able to come over with her family for Christmas because they're just getting over the virus. They all got it and wanted to make sure they kept us safe. Uh, so I trust that you had a good Christmas. Uh, at least you get off from school <laughs> from your virtual learning. I mean, that's a plus, isn't it? Good morning, Veronica. I, I trust that uh, Liz and Julissa are, are with you. Uh, Liz says, hi, Jim. Hi, you, hello to you, Liz. It was great seeing you and your sister last week. Uh, it, was, it was fun delivering the, uh, the gift cards uh, to many of you and mailing out others to, to those that lived a little further away. Uh, thanks to Ian DB for his generous gifts to be able to give each of you a $50 uh, gift certificate. Um, I, I hope you get something that, uh, that you really appreciate. Uh, let's get into our word this morning. Uh, let me open with a prayer. Father, I thank you as always for the young people that continue to watch these videos. God, I pray that you would use them to help keep them strong. It's been a long time since we've been able to meet, uh, and it'll, it'll be a minimum of a year before we're able to do it. Uh, so, God, I just pray that you continue to use these video messages, and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Uh, we're going through the gospel epistle of John, uh, 1 John. So we're in 518 now. Let me read it. It says, We know that anyone that was born of God, that means those of you that are Christians, you won't continue to sin. Because you have the Holy Spirit in you, you he will, the Holy Spirit will convict you. It says, but the one who was born of God, Jesus, keeps you safe, and the evil one cannot harm you. Jesus says, as Jesus will keep you safe, and the evil one will not harm you. Now, you all have parents, and I'm convinced that your parents do whatever they can to keep you safe. They, they, they would do whatever they have to do if a... If a if an intruder broke into your harm with a, with a weapon, I'm convinced that your mom or your dad would step between you and the intruder to protect you. That, that's what parents do. They, they protect their children. Uh, one of Kim, um, they, they do whatever. They, they, they work hard for you. They put you first in their lives. They're always concerned about you. They're concerned about your health. They're concerned about your schooling now. They're concerned about your, what you, the food you eat. They're concerned about whether you get enough sleep. They're concerned about who your friends are. They're concerned about how you spend your free time, what you do when you're away from home. They're concerned with all of those things because they're your parent and they're there to protect you. Well, God tells us that Jesus now is the one that also protects you. Uh... He calls, calls you his child, and as a child, he will protect you the same way that your, that your human mother and father protect you. He's already, he's already showing you how much he loves you just simply by suffering a terrible death on, on, the, on the cross just to prove that he, that he loves you. But we also have an enemy. We also have an enemy. Scripture says that Satan is like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Uh, years ago, years ago, when my daughter was going to get married, uh, we, we were looking at different places for her to get married, and there was a place, it was in the hills in Orange County, and I remember going there, and we soon I realized it was way too expensive. But we were, she was checking it out, and I was walking around, and they had all kinds of, it was, it was just an unbelievable place. And they had white tigers there, 
white tigers caged. And I remember walking by and I remember I stopped in front of this one and the tiger was laying down and I was just kind of staring at it. Then all of a sudden it got up and lunged towards the, the screen at me. And I, I was taken back and I was looking up to make sure that there was a, that he couldn't jump over the fence. It's like he, he wanted to attack me so bad, so bad. And that's what how God describes Satan. He's like that roaring lion, that roaring tiger looking to devour you. You're an enemy of his. Because you're a child of God, you become an enemy of, of Satan. He's at war with, with God, so, so he's naturally at war with those of us that follow him. So uh, who, who's going to help you with that roaring lion? Well, it's the very one that created that lion. The, only, only God can protect you from that roaring lion called Satan. Only God can protect you from him. The Gospel of John tells us this, that, that, that Satan has no hold on him. <clears throat> Jesus says, Satan has no hold on me, but he does have a hold on us. He does, he does have a hold on us. Uh, so we need the help of Jesus to, to fight against him. Now, you're all familiar with these verses, but let me just share them again to help you to understand. Listen to what it says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For your struggle is not against flesh and blood. When you struggle with different things, it's not with humans that you're struggling against. But you are struggling against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It's, it's a demonic warfare that's going on. And, and, and we're at battle. We're, we're at war. Says in, 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 Revel, in Revelation, it says that when Satan was kicked out of heaven with his demons, he went to war with us. It's not just a battle. It's not just a battle, it's a war. A war is one battle after another, after another, after another. And that's what it is in our life. You will constantly be battling against evil. You will constantly be battling against not to, against right and wrong, against evil and good. You'll, you'll have that all your life. So the sooner that you can learn this at a young age, the easier it'll be for you. That's why God gave us this armor. Now, I want you to picture Paul is in prison now. Okay, and he has his armed guards that are that are that are watching over him, and they're they're soldiers, and they're soldiers that have helmets and they have shields and they have a sword and they have all the things that a, that a soldier would have. So he's using this as an example for us. He says, therefore, put on the full armor of God. So he's going to equate what the that soldier has on. To, to, to what God will give us. So that when the evil day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stay standing. When Satan attacks you, you will have this, this, this armor to resist him so you're still standing so he doesn't knock you down and defeat you. So it says, stand firm then with the belt of truth top buckled around your waist. The, the, the soldier would have this, this belt that kept everything together. It was buckled around his waist and kept everything in place. And it was called truth. You know the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth and the way and the life. And, know, and everyone will know truth when you come to God. So you know the truth. The, the word is the truth. So, you are, so the, the more that you... The more that you are in his word, like you are right now, the more that your, that your protection is all held together, where you can fight against him. And, said, and then your breastplate. The breastplate is the biggest part of, the, of a soldier. It, it, I remember when I was in the, in the police force and in the army, when they trained us to shoot, they always told you to shoot for the biggest part of their body. Which was, the, which was this chest here. Shoot for that area there. Don't try to shoot the head or don't try to shoot the arm or the leg. If you have to shoot, shoot the, the, aim at the biggest part of the body. Well, that's why it says we have a, a breastplate of righteousness. Now, you all know what righteousness means. 
means being right with God. So one of the ways to resist Satan, the big, one of the biggest ways, the best way, it's the biggest part, one of the best ways is to be right with God. You, right now, you're watching this video. It's helping you to be right with God. And then it says, with the feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The soldiers had, or had footwear, but it wasn't just regular footwear. It was, it was special footwear that they had that they were able to hold up all the armor and they were able to run, run and they were able to go into battle. And, and, it's, and it says that that's the readiness that comes from the gospel when we share, when we share the gospel with others. The best way to, to defeat Satan is to, is to, in battle, is to use his word. Jesus, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, each time he was tempted, he quoted scripture to, to, to Satan. And finally, Satan left him. So, we, so we need to we need to do the same. In addition to this, take up the shield. The shield was what they had. That big shield that the soldier would carry. The the shield of faith, that which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Satan is going to be throwing arrows at you, and he says, "Your shield is your faith. Your faith, where you don't give up." Faith is, is believing, always, always trusting in God, always believing in God, never wavering, never wavering in your faith. That's how you defeat him. And then the helmet, the helmet is what they wore. Your head is one of the most fatal parts of your body. They put a helmet on. It was the helmet of salvation, knowing that you're saved, knowing that you're going to spend eternity with heaven. And it says, and then the sword. Now, every other... Part of it was defensive weapons, okay? The, the shield, the breastplate, all, all of that was, was defensive weapons against Satan. Well, God gives us an offensive weapon, the sword, which is the word of God. The word, the more you know about the word of God, the more scripture you know, the more scripture you study, that's your offensive weapon. That's why Jesus quoted scripture every time that Satan attacked him. That, that's the armor of God that God gives us. This armor is, is given to us to protect us from the evil one, from Satan. It says, hold, hold on to these as best you can. It says then, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus resisted Satan and Satan left him, fleed from him. You do the same thing and then say, because when Satan attacks you and if he can't beat you, then he'll go on to the next person. But if he can beat you, he'll stay there and keep knocking you down. He'll keep knocking you down until you just feel like giving up. So you have to fight against that. That's why God gave us this armor. So use that armor. Use that armor against the evil one, okay? Let's close with a prayer. Father, I thank you for your word. I pray, God, that these young people at a young, young age learn to use the armor that you've given, especially that sword, especially your word of God. I pray, God, that they, that's why they're, Right now, they're 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 learning something from your word. Uh, it's their, it's it's like a sword in their hand. Uh, God continue to bless these young people. Amen. Hey, thank you for watching, parents. Thank you for for encouraging your children. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you Tuesday night.